थैंक यू सो मच फॉर ज्वाइनिंग इन वी आर बैक हियर विद अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ द ई वाई जी सी सी लीडरशिप सीरीज एंड टूडे आई एम हियर इन चेन्नई एट द रेनो निसान टेक्नोलॉजी एंड बिजनेस सेंटर इंडिया एंड आई बी टॉकिंग टू ईवा जेम्स अबाउट वॉट ड्राइव दिस सेंटर एंड वॉट देर आउटलुक इज फॉर द नेक्स्ट टू टू थ्री ईयर्स सो थैंक यू ईवा फॉर ज्वाइनिंग अस टूडे एंड वेलकम टू दिस एपिसोड लेट मीज जस्ट स्टार्ट विद दिस सेंटर कैन यू गिव अस लिटल बेर ऑफ introduction into what exactly you do out of the center here in chennai sure indam we are a strategic hub outside of the corporate for both reno and nissan we've been around for 15 years we are one of the largest centers outside of the hub and after 15 years proud to say that we have pretty much the entire uh, scope of activities be it design a uh, vehicle and component engineering for both local and global products technology research and a lot of back office operation with a very clear vision to be the most competitive vehicle development center and to st- steer the organization to become a digital automotive company that's the whole purpose of uh, reno nissan tech in india got it and and when i see outside i see banners uh, which talk about 15 years you've got digital finance factory you've got a lot of let's say celebration of those 15 years when you talk about technology i mean this area especially the automotive space is going through a massive amount of disruption right you've got disruption that's continued for quite a number of years around electric vehicles uh, the whole concept of gasoline vehicles starting to move away you've got the influence of ai how does this center really tackle some of those upcoming let's say innovations and disruptions especially when it comes in the context of reno and nissan absolutely i think this industry is probably the one which has been the most disrupted with technology be it autonomous vehicles or electrification today the software is uh, is even defined as a sdv a right. software driven vehicle it's almost like a computer with cars right so if you look at almost all of these spectrum the entire spectrum uh, r&t bci is in the middle of it but i think we have the big ecosystem here uh, with the right level of talent with the right level of a startup ecosystem that is also f- helping us to go and play and experiment so some of these big things that are happening in the organization today be the digital twin or the metaverse or the battery research that we are doing with in partnership with iit madras all of these things are incubated and built i would say 80 to 90% of the core work is happening in india uh, with a lot of support and hand holding the beauty is after 15 years i am personally witnessing the the boundary between the corporate and the hubs reduced or i can even say it is being redefined that many of the critical roles that were typically in the past run out of the corporates are being done here so i have people in my team who are redefining connected services for the amur region sitting in india the building the road maps i have people who are working very closely with startups across the globe on the metaverse for the reno group so uh, i have cb the chief vehicle engineers for local products and for products across the globe from rnt bci so in this fashion i think uh, one is the technology uh, adoption but the other is also the maturity of individuals and the people and the trust that the corporate or has on us today to take up such lead roles thereby encouraging the india system to play around with innovative ideas uh, the, the trust is there today so it's a it's really a reversal of roles to Absolutely. be honest right so from what i understood you went from tell me what to do there's an idea here on on how we can improve yes an idea with a working solution there was a time when we were co-creating it today we are almost independently, independently building right. it and taking it to them with a lot of uh, appreciation and acceptance for the ideas that are coming from india so that is i mean that's a very interesting point you bring up uh, ivan so i guess there's a lot of debate today on this term of gccs and so on so for do you now consider this center as a true hub of reno nissan and not just an outpost and not just a let's say a differently classified unit this is an integral part of absolutely one of the nice things that i i like i mean this is a word that i've only seen in my current workplace which is reno nissan tech is the operating model is called as a one team model right it is not like there is someone in corporate there's a stakeholder there who gives the jobs here and then we do yes there's a logistics or there's a legality around us being a separate right. entity right. those leaving that aside the team completely 
operate through the one team mindset. I will give you some examples. There are some very critical products or applications. Uh, for example, in the digital uh, mock-up phase, uh, the validation of the digital design of a car, a huge uh, milestone in the car manufacturing process. That particular system is completely built from here. The person who is responsible from here is in my team and this lady uh, has users or uh, other participants from across the globe in other parts of the country and it doesn't matter that the leader is in India, right? So the roles have reversed. And that's that example is for new cars that you're launching? This particular IS system that we're talking about is for all the cars that are coming out of the Renault system today. It's called a validation program in the simulation space. To answer your question, yes, the whole uh, paradigm of uh, something is happening at the corporate, we are tagging along has changed significantly. We are an integral part. Uh, I mean, we will continue to call ourselves as GCC, right. but I see myself as a Renault person sitting and working in India. Excellent. Now, let me just shift gears. Now, this center to do what it does and from all of the great examples that you shared requires a lot of talent, right? Anything specific that you do from a talent strategy perspective, I mean, you are talking about very, you know, cutting edge, more uh, emerging technologies here. You're talking about actually driving things like digital mock-ups, digital twins that you refer to, you do need some very high-end talent. Absolutely. As I said, we are in our 16th year uh, of operations. And uh, when we started, uh, we started with doing maintenance activity for some uh, legacy skills and uh, all of that stuff. And then we had this huge digital transformation. So multiple things. It's not just one thing that solves all the problem. One is Today, if you look at my workforce, uh, the technology team inside known as Suntech is about is a 3,000 member team. Uh, at least 60% of them are people who are already working with us with legacy skills, who have been cross-skilled or upskilled for some of these newer tech stacks. And the advantage is they have the business background, they know, they know the ecosystem, they know the IS landscape. So with the new skills, they are able to quickly contribute. Whereas as again, someone coming from outside to getting to know the system, that is, that's a very one way of helping people grow and everyone wants to pursue newer skills and newer right. technologies and that's helped our retention as well. And of course, uh, we rely on a lot of industry partners because at the end of the day we still believe that the industry has a lot of skills and expertise so 80% of my staff is internal and 20% I still rely on, on external partners. on partners to bring in some cutting edge technologies for example uh, in the recent past we are doing some big SAP S4 HANA transformation and I needed some C teams to help us uh, move forward faster and I had to go for an external partner. So this is another thing which we do to bring in some industry expertise. Likewise, when we started work with Metaverse, we, we needed someone who had the edge on that. We, we do a lot of tie-ups with T-Hub and other uh, right. startup ecosystems because the agility with which they are able to start and fail and uh, their experiences of doing such things also helps us. At the end of the day, we are an organization which works only for Reno, whereas these entities have a lot more a lot expertise. More so that is another thing which uh, has also helped us significantly in bringing some of the best practices that they would have done for a BMW or a Mercedes or any one of that. But are you co-creating with academia? One is to work with the pool that we have. The other is to prepare future ready graduates because this story is not going to end today, right? Uh, they say that by 2030, the AI market is going to go, the, the budget for the AI market is going to go up by 20x. So which means we need future ready graduates. So right. we have a very strong partnership with many uh, colleges in and around Tamil Nadu. We curate course content. Uh, we do faculty development programs. We are also we have not started, but we are very close to what is called as the industry at campus with the help of ICT Academy, which is a Government of India initiative, where we go and set up a small working center inside colleges. And this we are trying to do in colleges in the southern parts of Tamil Nadu, where the reach for them to work with corporates is limited. And this uh, is like labs that you set up? No, or? these would be small workspaces. This is, you can imagine, okay. to be like a satellite office okay, in, okay, okay, uh, in okay. Nagar Koil in Sebastian's College right, a 50-seater. And this would also attract for colleges in and around Nagar Koil. We will set up a lab and we've decided the two or three colleges that we are going to go with. We will set up some 
incubation centers for data or for cyber or for penetration testing. So we would also do some focused rather than spreading it thin across multiple things. And you will have interns there? Yes, we would have interns. We would also have, especially post COVID, we have people all over the state and who are wanting to have such flexibility to work from near their home. So we, I already have a good number of volunteers who want to be the local leaders who can also train interns, who can work with the colleges. I think that would be a game changer. Today we don't have that, but we are very close to signing MOUs there. Because five years back, no one talked about it. But uh, we had some investments in advanced technologies. We were invested on uh, people to play with computer vision and Google Glasses. And today, if you see, those are all systems that the plant is using in the quality of the car. And a lot of those folks of. that you've incubated for the last few years have now joined the center here. Yes. As well. And absolutely. that's the intent, that's right? The you intent. want to build that's the workforce. That's the whole idea. Future. That's the whole idea. Um, I think this is a perennial issue that academia point out that GCCs don't necessarily collaborate much, right? They're seeing a lot of focus from other industries. So it's very interesting to hear that you are uh, actually doing this and doing this at scale. The next question that I have for you, which I ask everyone that I meet in Chennai, why did you choose Chennai as the location? Honestly, I, I joined midway, right. <laughs> but I think the thought process was Chennai was still an untapped talent right. pool and at that point of time, there was a lot of government subsidies for the plant and today if you see uh, 15 kilometers from where we are, we have our plant. So it, it really helps my team, the entire organization, because uh, we are very unique. If you look at the GCC uh, for automobiles in India, I think Renault Nissan is very unique because we have all the players. Uh, within 15-20 uh, kilometers radius. Inside Renault Nissan Tech, we have the engineering, uh, we have uh, IT, uh, the organization that I lead, we have a back office operations, we have a design studio, and then we have the plant. Right. Uh, so we have all of us around here, and I think uh, from a talent perspective, Chennai is, is a big talent market. If you look at the retention rates across the country, uh, retention rates are much, much better here. The college, universities ecosystem is good. The startup ecosystem is good. And still, uh, places like Bangalore and Hyderabad are not too far away. Right. Today, we have satellite offices in Hyderabad and Bangalore as well, post-COVID. Uh, today, for the especially the software-driven vehicle, where we have partnership with some Bangalore-based entities, we have a big team in Bangalore as well. Okay. So, so, you are utilizing other cent hubs across the country. So, maybe one last question, Eva, for you. What do you see happening in this center in the next two to three years? What's the future like? I think uh, we have forged a very strong bond with the corporate uh, and I think that has happened because we have demonstrated over and again that we are fully autonomous, that uh, we have all the le relevant kind of skills, roles and expertise to build and uh, we have the right management structure, the good governance, lean structure competitive. So I think the future is more uh, to drive some of these large programs. Uh, for example, I will give you one. The adoption of AI has been in pockets, in silos uh, across Renault and Nissan because that's how everyone starts. But now there is a very conscious effort to take it to a much larger level. So we have launched a program called AI at Scale. Our president uh, has announced a program called Leap 100. So uh, the AI at Scale program, you can do whatever you want, but then go towards Leap 100. Got it. Uh, and for the AI at Scale program, uh, the entire AI COE is housed at RNTBCI. So we will be taking a very large role. So personally, I think that would be one big focus area for all of us, while business as usual will continue. And AI at scale cannot happen in a small pocket. Right. You need data from every single business. Uh, you need people to play with it. You need the process engineers. So I think it will be a very well orchestrated program for all of us, this AI at scale program touching many, many uh, businesses, entities, the, the outfits within the organization. So that would be our big focus area, uh, touching all of us. And, and, and you see that as a center point of what uh, Renault Nissan strategy is going to be for Absolutely. the future. Perfect. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Eva, for joining us. It's a fascinating journey. We wish you all the best. Thank you very um, much, Arinda. For many years to come. And for those joining in, thank you so much for joining in again. We'll be back soon with the next episode in this series. Thank you and take care.